Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope you all are doing extremely well. So today in this video, we are going to solve problem of the day on the Geeks for Geeks platform. So today's problem is modified numbers and queries. So right, we will be understanding the problem statement first and then the logic part and then we will be going with that. Before proceeding further guys, make sure to subscribe my channel if you haven't subscribed till now. It will really motivate me to create this content for you. And I believe the channel is going to be helpful for you. Then what are you waiting for? Do subscribe the channel, turn on the bell icon and don't forget to join our telegram community too. The link is there in the description. With that, with that note, let's get started with the problem statement now. So the problem says, uh, find the sum of all the numbers between the range L and R. Here, each number is represented by the sum of its prime factors. As a note, for example, 6 is represented by 5 because 6 has 2 prime factors, 2 and 3. Uh, so the sum is going to be what? 5. So basically what we have to do, we have to find the sum of all the numbers which are lying between the range, the uh, given range L and R. And we have to include that range as well, right? Now what is given here that each number is represented by the sum of its prime factor, right? So sum you're going to consider, right? For a number, let's say for a, for a number 6, the sum associated is going to be the, is going to be the sum of its prime factors. Prime factors are going to be what, which are not divisible by any other number except 1 and the number itself. So for 6, what are the prime factors? 2 and 3 are the prime factors because see, they are not divisible by any other number except 1 and the number itself. Right? So the sum of these two prime factors that 6 does have is going to be what? 2 plus 3 equal to 5. 5 right? So the sum associated with the value 6 is going to be what? 5. Right? So I hope you understood the problem statement. Let's understand with the help of an example too. So here the range L and R is giving us as 1 and 2, right? So between this range, for 1, what would be the prime factor? For 1, they have taken it as 1 itself. For 1, the value is going to be 1 itself. For 2, it, it is going to be 2 itself, right? So oh, the sum is going to be 1. The sum is going to be 3. Next for this range. So with 1, the uh, prime factor, the sum associated is going to be what? 1. For 2, there is just one prime factor that is 2 itself. So the, uh, the sum associated is going to be 2. For 3, it is 3 itself. For 4, it is 2 itself. For 5, it is just 5 itself. For 6, it is 2 as well as 3. So the sum associated is going to be 2 plus 3, that is 5. Now overall, if you if you will sum them up, so we will be having 1, 2, 3, 2, 5, 5, that is nothing but 18. Right? So you must be able to understand the problem statement by now. So whatever task is, we have to complete the function sum of all, which takes L and R as input parameter and return sum, uh, sum all the numbers as represented in the given range, both L and R has to be included. Now, uh, expected time complexity and auxiliary space they have mentioned, if constraints are there, right? So, how we can solve this problem? Well, the problem is easy only, right? What we have to do is first of all, like for a number, uh, like obviously we have to take a loop because we have to consider all the numbers lying in the range L and R. Now, the numbers that are lying in the range, we have to determine the factors uh, out of which we need, what we need only the prime factors, right? And we have to sum them up, uh, the sum associated with each number we have to find, right? So that would be nothing but equal to the sum of the prime factors of that specific number. So that's how, that's what we are supposed to do like this. Now the question is determining the prime factor. So regarding that, what approach we are going to use? So here, what approach we are going to use? We'll be using the sieve of error numbers, right? So if you want to understand more about this, more about this algorithm, this is very famous algorithm to determine when when this query thing is given to us, right? When this query thing is given to us, right? Then uh, instead of again and again determining for a number for a specific set of numbers whether they are prime or not. We use this algorithm, right? So you can refer this article um, in the case for case. I'm I'll be giving you a quick overview of this algorithm. For example, we have been given a number of ten, and we have to determine we have to determine all primes that are smaller than or equal to ten, right? So what we are doing here is basically how this algorithm basically works. So here's the explanation for the day. For the same, let's say n equal to fifty is given to us. So we have determined all the numbers. Uh, all the numbers in this range or uh, that are prime number. See, 
think here that that's what they have specified in the question, right? Print all primes that are smaller than or equal to n. Okay, so n value here is 50. So what we are going to do is, so we have to print all prime numbers is smaller than or equal to 50. So we'll be taking a we'll be taking an array, right? So we create a list of all numbers from 2 to 50, right? Now according to algorithm, what we're going to do is we are going to mark all the numbers which are divisible by 2. So first the number is 2. So see. What are the numbers which are divisible by 2? 4, 6. Because see, if a number is divisible uh, by 2, right? So for here we are considering 2, right? So it is not going to be a prime number for sure. So we are going to mark it. Okay. So all the numbers which are divisible by 2, we have marked. Now we will move to the next number. We move to the next number. So our next number is what? Next unmarked number. Unmarked means what? So first we are considering, first we are making this assumption that all the numbers are prime numbers. Then one by one on the basis of divisibility, we are marking those numbers as not prime. So the next number which is not marked, that is 3. So now what we will be doing is we will be marking all the numbers which are multiples of 3 and are greater than or equal to the square root. So we are marking all the numbers. So see, 3 for 3 we have 6. See, the number which is already marked, right? So we are not going to check for that. So 6 was already marked because of 2, right? Because 6 is a multiple of 2, right? So um, number like 9, right? And uh, 15, all those numbers we are going to mark. You see, we have marked 27, 21, right? Then next, so next number is 4, but it is marked. So we are not going to consider this. The next number is 5. Right, so the mark we will be marking all the multiples of 5 and are greater than or equal to the square root. Right, so we see we will continue this process and on the continuation our final table will look like this. So the number which are not marked, right? So these are the prime numbers. So you can see 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, 37, 41, 43, 47. So these are all the prime numbers. Right? So I hope you must be able to understand, right? So that's that's the algorithm that we're going to use, right? So this is this was the main uh, thing about this uh, problem, right? To understand the theme of error consistency, I'll be providing the link of this article so that you can get a better understanding, right? So now we'll be having a look at the code. So here you can see what I have done is so, so for we have taken this like I've taken this array time, right? And the size kept it as so in the they have mentioned right 10 power 4. So I have taken the sizes 1 0 0 0 1. Right now, uh, this is the function that is given to us regarding in which we have to do the implementation. We are having L as well as R values. So, first we have called this function C work around this space. Right, this function was given here in this article itself. So, I have just reported the same. Right. So now here what we are doing is initially we are making this assumption that all the ih values they are what they are they are what they are prime. Right now so again on checking whatever the numbers are divisible by or a multiple of ih value we are making it as we are making it as marking marking thing right so marking thing that I explained. So now what we are doing here is see again you have to do the uh, processing for a given number only if that is a prime number that is not basically that's how you can understand. So that's what we are checking here if prime of i is equal equal to uh, then we have to mark all the multiples of that ith number and we have to mark it as false. Right? That is it is not a prime number. Right? So all the computation, all the logic regarding the prime thing we have mentioned in this function. Now what we are doing here is what we are doing is here is so this value will be returning at the end and this sum is responsible for taking sum of each uh, i get value that we are coming across from this end to one, right? So what we are doing here is, see, if i value is equal equal to that of 1, right, if i value is equal equal to that of 1, or the given i get value itself is a prime number, for example, we have 5. So that is itself is a prime number, right? So it won't be having any of factors or like that. So simply we are going to add this i get value and we will be continuing in that. Otherwise, we are having this volume or uh, int j equal to j less than equal to i divided by 2 j plus plus. Now we are checking that if the given jth value is prime and also if this jth value is a factor of like this jth value is able to divide i. Right? So if i mod j equal to 0, so we are going to add this to our sum and the sum that we have got for a given ith value, right? Uh, the prime factor sum, right? So we are adding this to our parts of 
when you do, right? And at the end, we are simply learning us, right? So that was the complete uh, code for the logic that we discussed. That was the implementation. I hope that you must be able to understand the problem statement, the logic part, and the code as well. So I have provided this code in the description, so you can refer it from there. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. If there is anything, do let me know in the comment section and to motivate me further to create more such content, please, please do consider subscribing my channel and turn on the bell icon too to get updated, to get the notification of uh, any video that we are uploading. Thank you so much for watching everyone.